second video in this four video series about the open horn MIDI system. Today I'm going to be talking about the biphonic capabilities of the ohms. So that means when I play two notes at the same time, as you might have heard uh, just a second ago. So the open horn MIDI system has four different playing modes uh, in the main horn here, and um, they're controlled through the use of the index fingers. Both index fingers come into play. You can use one and the other separately, none or both together, and so you get four different playing modes. Uh, let's start with the right index finger. Now, if you're familiar with the saxophone fingering, then you will know that this is the F key, right? So we're here, we're holding the, sax the saxophone here, the ohms in this case, and this here is the F key. And right next to the F key, I have this little thingy here, and this is just another key. And once you touch it, whether or not you're touching the F key, I'm just showing you how I do that. Just twist the finger up there so that I can still reach the F key like this. So once you touch this, then the note that you're playing at that moment is locked into place, and it'll sound underneath what you are playing from that point on. So let me just quickly demonstrate that. I'm going to play something and then I'm going to log on out and keep playing. So that's the, uh, the sustain mode where you can uh, play it and then lock a note in place and keep playing over it, under it, go around, change the note and keep going and have a lot of fun with that. On top of that, uh, using the other index finger, we built the interval mode where there is a parallel note sounding with what you play. It moves up and down and uh, it does the same intervals as you're playing. So it's, uh, it's a parallel voice. And so you start playing and then you sustain a note. Right now we're here, we have an A and an F, because the F was sounding when I, when I sustained. And so I get up to the A, and we have this sounding. Now if I do what I just did with my right index finger, I do that same thing with this one, at this point, and I lock not the note A or the note F into place, but the interval between A and F, which is a major third, and that will be the interval that, that sounds as a key playing. And this works across octaves, with whatever notes you want, and it gets pretty crazy when I've been doing it for a while and my brain starts to leak out of my ears and stuff. So, um, but anyway, I'll just uh, try to play around a little bit, try to get a feel for what's going on here. Um, let's see. in the parallel mode, if you let go of the left index finger extra button here, you drop that note and you leave it to sustain, so you're still touching the sustain key. And so you just drop that note and you leave it there and you keep playing, but that is still sounding where you just left it. Touch the other key again, you pick it up and you start moving in parallel again. So there's some very interesting effects to be made with this. Uh, like
like I said, some interesting effects to be made with the sustain mode and the interval playing mode together. Uh, and keep in mind the beautiful thing about these two playing modes, the playing biphonically, is that uh, you use the saxophone fingerings throughout. So as you activate one mode and then the other, you're still picking out each note with the regular saxophone fingering. So that really reduces the mental overload of playing two notes at the same time on a, on a one note fingering setup. But with that said, uh, both the sustain mode and the interval playing mode are more sort of an afterthought to the original biphonic playing mode in the ohms, and that is the split mode. The split playing mode is much more powerful than the sustain and interval playing modes in that I'm able to pick each of the two notes separately at any given time. So I do this by basically splitting the instrument into two halves uh, and uh, so I can play uh, one note here in my right hand with four fingers and another separate note in my left hand with these four fingers. So that obviously cancels out any chance of using saxophone fingerings. Um, but I've come up with a pretty simple scheme that uh, helps me maximize the uh, available range in each hand. So uh, let me just show you that. Here you can see the original artwork slash blueprint that I first scribbled down when I came up with the uh, split playing mode. As you may be able to recognize, it's a binary system where you can either fill or not fill each spot. And then the lower row here has uh, notes going chromatically from C up to a D, so that's an octave and a whole tone. And then each column here represents two different things. First of all, it's a 4-bit binary code. <clears throat> so that gives us 16 different combinations, which is why there are 16 columns. Now each column also represents the four fingers in each of your hands and the, the, the keys that you should be touching to play the note in question. So you have to imagine a second system up here that represents your other hand that does exactly the same thing. So I hope that makes sense. Let's just have a look at that on the ohms. As soon as you activate the split playing mode by touching this key here, then uh, the two halves of the ohms will respond exactly the same to the actions of your two hands, except uh, for one small detail. The left hand is what I consider the main hand, and so if you touch none of the keys in the left hand, the right hand will not respond at all. But as soon as you touch any of the keys uh, in the left hand, like this fingering here, for example, D, then the right hand is activated as well. Uh, but if you touch nothing in the, in the right hand, then it will simply play a unison voice with the left hand. But as soon as, you, as soon as you touch any of the keys in the right hand, then you will hear that split uh, voice. But this gets extra exciting once you realize that the ohms is actually using two separate MIDI channels for these two voices, so I can easily change one instrument or both of them down here in my pedals. I'm basically able to play those two voices with any combination of instruments I want, which is very nice. And uh, that concludes my explanation of the three biphonic playing modes in the open horn MIDI system. I hope you found it instructive or maybe entertaining or perhaps both. Uh, in the next video in the series, I'm going to take you on a journey through the software that I use and how I connect to it with uh, the pedal rack specifically. And that's the content of the third video. Now, the fourth and final video in the series, I will open up the open horn for you so that you can have a look inside and see how it all works and how it all fits together. But for now, I'll leave you with a bit of music. <laughs>